Hi everyone, I hope you all are doing good and having a wonderful day. In this video, I am going to show you that how we can look for cross-site scripting vulnerabilities in 2024 or how we can bypass some common misconfigured web application firewalls to you know execute JavaScript on a web application. But as always, before going to this video, if you haven't checked out my previous video in which I have showed you that how we can do subdomain takeover by giving a live example, then go ahead and check it out. The link of the video is given in the description as well as you can see it on the right side of the screen. And now with that being said, let us get started. Okay, so now let us try to understand that how we can find cross site scripting vulnerability. Okay, but first thing is that before going to this video, if you are a beginner and if you don't know what cross site scripting is, then I believe you need to check out some basics video like what is cross site scripting and how you can look for cross site scripting. Okay, uh, by default, some of the common steps are that you need to look for an input field which is reflecting your value, whatever you're giving, and then you're, you're going to check for the dangerous characters like less than and greater than symbol. And if it is reflecting as it is, then you can go ahead and test for cross site scripting payloads. Okay, but this is not the uh, you can say uh, the only case. Okay, there are various ways to find cross site scripting, but this is you can say a generalized way of finding excesses. Okay, if you don't know how we can find excesses, then go ahead and check out some of the videos of mine. I think it will be displaying over here as well. And I'm also dropping all the uh, cross site scripting videos in the comment section. Okay, so you can just go ahead and check those videos. And all of the excesses videos are on most of them are on live websites. You can you'll definitely learn something interesting from that. Okay. Apart from that, let us try to see that how we can look for cross site scripting if uh, there is some kind of an application firewall or if, uh, you know, there are some modern application that have, you know, very, uh, we can say robust mechanism for, uh, we can say detecting XSS attacks. First of all, I have created this very simple lab and this lab, trust me that this, the, the lab which I have created right over here, I have found a lot of live applications, you know, which were just behaving like this particular lab and we're going to solve this lab and we're going to understand that how we can uh, you know uh, execute a javascript co code over here okay first of all you can see it is on local host okay and if i type anything over here like let's say a batman just for the example okay you can clearly see that whatever value which i'm giving over here is getting reflected as it is right over here okay so the first thing is that we have identified an input uh, field right so as a normal tester what we can do is we can simply test for how it is behaving when we are passing less than and greater than symbol so you can clearly see that it is reflecting in the response let's try to see if it is reflecting as it is or not and we can clearly see over here that it is indeed reflecting as it is once we have confirmed that what we can do is we can go ahead and uh, uh, inject some tags, inject some HTML tags, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to inject a tag. For example, I'm going to inject uh, an H1 tag. Okay. Let us hit enter and let's see what will happen after that. You can see the moment I hit this uh, H1, give, give this H1 input in the, uh, you can say field in the value, you can see it is saying that malicious input detected. Okay. Let's try to switch this with any other uh, values. For example, anchor tag we can go with. Again, you can see that it is, again, it is saying that malicious input is detected. Let's try to add some it's a random values. Okay. And again, once again, it is saying that malicious input is detected. Okay. In that case, what we can do is, you can see that uh, whatever value we're giving inside this, uh, you can say less than and greater than symbol, you know, it is getting uh, detected by the application and we're getting this malicious input detected. Let's try to remove this. And instead of this, let's try to add a numeric value, for example, one or two. Okay. And you can clearly see that it is actually getting reflected as it is. Okay. Which means that there is some kind of restriction, you know, that is preventing us to add any, uh, we can say, uh, alphabetical characters into uh, between the less than and the greater than symbol. Okay, this is what we can conclude from here. We are not sure about it. Okay, we're just going to assume that this is a live application. And let's try to see that what we can do right over here. So now there is a very interesting website of Portswigger, which is, I'm just going to show you Portswigger XSH Cheat Sheet. Okay, which they have just developed and it is actually pretty amazing. Let me just click on this one. Let me just do it real quick. 
and what we need to do is we need to click on this very first link okay i'm just going to open that and don't worry this link is also given in the description now you can clearly see over here that it is giving a lot of tags and the event associated with those tags and the browser which are supporting those events okay you can see for example on after script execute is supporting uh, supported by only microsoft sorry uh, firefox right says that fires when a css animation get cancelled so what we we are going to do is we are going to first of all open up verb suit okay let me just open my verb suit and after that what we are going to do is we are going to inject a value between this uh, you can say less than and greater than symbol and then we are going to see which of the tags are getting accepted on this particular web application so i'm just going to start the verb now and let me just turn it off yeah it's already turned off and i'm going to just turn on my intercept okay now what i'm going to do is first i'm going to capture the request over here and i'm going to send this to repeater okay and then we know that if we are giving any value inside this uh you can say less than and greater than symbol disks getting filtered by the application okay what i want to do is i want to let's also see the source code okay so you see random values are getting accepted okay this is what we have just discovered right now you can clearly see that if we're giving any random value it is getting reflected in the response but if it is a tag like let's say uh, anchor tag again you can see it is saying that malicious input is detected okay so now we have got a new idea about how this application might be working right so the application could be filtering out only the values inside the uh, you can say single uh, what you can say less than and greater than symbol sorry less than and greater than symbol which is used by html okay so let's try to see that what are the html tags which are you know uh, which are getting bypassed by this particular application so this is our first step okay so i'm just going to copy all the tags from here and let me just go right over here and i'm going to send this particular request to the intruder okay you can see this is the value one two right i'm going to select this and i'm going to send this uh, request body to the intruder and over here i'm going to go to the payload section and i'm simply going to paste all the tags that we have copied okay let me see if i have copied the correct tags uh yeah, these are all the tags it's going to see if it is let me clear it again let's paste it yeah okay and finally what i'm going to do is i'm going to click on start attack okay let's click on okay and now you can see that uh by default the you can see response is 232 right and if the length of the response is 232 then we can assume that it is it will be malicious input detected from here itself okay what i want to uh, know is that if is there any other uh, you can say tags which have a different length apart from 232 if it is then it means that it might be reflecting as it is in the response okay so let's try to see that i'm just going to you can see that some of these uh, you can say uh, uh, tags have different values right 216 217 let's try to select this one and let's go to response you can clearly see that the response is uh, including the particular tag that we gave right we can also verify that so for example this h group right i'm going to open the h group sorry open the link and instead of anchor i'm going to type h group and let's hit enter let's go to response and you will clearly see that it is getting reflected as it is okay so from here we have concluded that h group is reflecting as it is okay which means that this tag is allowed by the application what i can do now is I can simply go to find this H group and if you scroll down, you will notice that all of the payloads that I'm getting over here is, you know, including this H group, right? This H group uh, tag. So we can clearly go ahead and use one of this, but you can see that, uh, for example, some of these uh, like this one can be interesting, right? For example, over here, you can see it is also including the script tag, which might be not acceptable by the application. You can verify that. Let's try to see if it is accepting script. And you can clearly see that it is not accepting the script tag. 
okay so we need to look for a particular payload that is you know only including the tag which is allowed not uh, any other tags like over here it is script right we don't want script tag to be there we only want h group tag to be present so we have this uh, particular uh, what you can say particular uh, payload over here which we can give it a try right and similar to this you are going to try those payloads which uh, for which the application is allowing you to uh, you know insert the tags okay let's try to see this in action for example over here uh let me just go to intruder and if you scroll down you can see that this content uh, tag is also allowed right so what i can do now is i can simply just go to the uh, you can say application over here and i'm going to oh, forget about it let's go to burp suit i'm going to go to repeater I'm going to replace everything from here okay let's type my name sorry it's for years. And then what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to inject the payload, which is content. Okay. And let's now uh, try to send the request. You can see it is getting reflected as it is. Now with the URL encoding method, we need to add our, uh, you can say attribute. Okay. The trigger point, which is going to, you know, execute the JavaScript. Okay. So I'm going to type percent 20 because we know percent 20 stands for white space, right? If we decode it person 20 then on mouse over equals to alert one just like this and if you send the request you can clearly see that it is getting reflected as it is and it is also getting highlighted which means that the chances are almost you know high that uh, the javascript code will be getting executed over here the last thing i'm going to do is i'm going to add a random value okay testing and then i want to close the tag okay content like this let's send the request now okay so you can see it is saying that 404 not found why because we need to encode this particular uh, you can say character as well and we can simply do that by just going to convert selection go to url and you can select this url encode all characters like this and if you're going to send the request now you can clearly see that the value is getting reflected as it is and i'm simply going to copy the url over here and uh, let's try to go ahead and paste this out okay let's hit enter you can see it nothing is happening because we have given this on mouse over event so if you're going to just hover our mouse onto this testing value it it should show us the alert one popped up and you can clearly see that the javascript code has been executed successfully right so this is how you can look for process scripting if there's any web application that is you know uh, that is having a web application firewall at, or that is restricting your payloads okay so you can just go ahead and follow this particular methodology and trust me you will be able to find a lot more process scripting vulnerabilities now for those who might be thinking that how i came to know about this on mouse over so you can simply go ahead and you can just scroll down and you'll see we have this on mouse over event right over here Let me just show you on mouse leave here it is on mouse over requires a hover over the element okay so we can clearly go ahead and use this particular payload as well let's try to use that okay i'm going to use this one again and uh, let me paste it right over here And you see that it is giving us the bad request because we want to encode whatever value we gave over here. So we can simply just URL encode everything. So I'm just going to encode all characters. Let's send the request and you can see it is getting uh, what you can say rendered as it is. Let me just copy the URL again and I'm going to paste it right over here. Let's hover over it and clearly you can see that the alert one is executed successfully which means that the javascript code has been executed and we are able to do cross-site scripting vulnerability i hope that you have understood it so yeah if you have any doubts if you have any issues feel free to let me know your doubts or issues in the comment section also do join our telegram channel if you want to stay updated with the latest trends and technologies going into cyber security ethical hacking and bug bounty and if you like the way i teach then i am running these three awesome courses the first one is the art of web reconnaissance where you can learn that how you can dive deep into the target to discover those assets which are you know hidden by the rest of the world and then the chances of finding the vulnerabilities will be quite high over there 
The second course is uh, uh, hacking windows with Python from scratch, where you are going to learn that how you can create a custom payloads that you can use to you know hack into any Windows machine, execute shell commands, access webcams, and all those things. And the third course is bug bounty, the ultimate guide to hunt account takeovers, wherein you are going to learn that how you can look for account takeover vulnerabilities or those vulnerabilities that can allow you to take over someone's account and all of these courses are fully practical and you're going to learn a lot of valuable and information things from all of these courses so if you're interested then go ahead and check it out the link of all these courses are also given in the description and now with that being with that being said keep learning keep hacking and thank you so much for watching